Hello everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to make and animate this scene in Blender. Okay, let's get started. So, delete everything in your scene. Shift A to add a plane. In edit mode, click S, then X to scale it along its axis. This is going to be our road. Duplicate the plane. And then in edit mode, duplicate it again to the other side of the road. This is going to be our ground for the grass. Now just extend the edges. Import your car model, and if you don't have one, here's a few websites where you could download one for free. It doesn't have to be rigged. Add an empty, this is going to be our main control object for the scene. Select all the objects making up your car. Then selecting the empty last, hit Ctrl P to parent the car to the empty. Rotate your car and move it so it's on the side of the road. In this case I had to adjust the road to make it a little bit wider so it fits the car. In the shader editor, Add a new material, and selecting the principal shader with the node wrangler add-on enabled, hit Ctrl T, and then import your road texture. Now the texture is all messed up, so to adjust it, hit Tab, make sure everything is selected, then U, Unwrap. In the UV editor, select your Unwrap, then scale it until it fits the size of the road. This part is optional, but what I did was imported a character. I used this character from CG Trader. I wanted the character's arm to be outside the window, so in edit mode, I deleted the window. Make sure to parent the rig to the control object. Now let's pose our character. For this part, just have fun. Try to keep in mind also the proportions of the character to make sure it fits inside the car. For this character, I wanted to remove the back gear. Select the object, hit slash to view only that object. Then in the edit mode, I deleted all the parts of the model I didn't want. Then I roughly posed the character to the car but it doesn't have to be too accurate, because it's barely visible. Okay, now add a camera, then hit Alt-R to reset its rotation. Then R, X, 90 to, ra to rotate it 90 degrees. Then move the camera to the side of the car. Parent the camera to the control object, so it follows the car. I changed the aspect ratio to a wider, more cinematic look. In the camera viewport settings, I used the golden ratio, just to help me with the composition. I wanted to make the background a little bit hill. So I moved up the edge and added a few loop cuts to add a little bit of a curve. That'll be good enough for now. Now it's time to set the keyframes for the scene. I made it about 6 seconds long. On the first frame, I selected the empty, hit I to insert a keyframe. Then I went to the last frame and moved the empty to the end of the scene. Then I hit I again to insert another keyframe. Selecting both keyframes, I hit T and linear to make sure the car doesn't speed up and slow down and has a consistent speed. Watching back the scene, I realized the car was moving too slow, so I selected the ground. Then in edit mode, I extended it so the car would drive faster. Go to your last frame and move the car to the end of the scene, and make sure to insert the keyframes again. I did this a couple times until I got the speed that I wanted. That looks about right. Next, I want to add some variation to the ground to make it look a little bit more natural. So I added a bunch of loop cuts so I have more geometry to work with. Click O to enable proportional editing. Use the scroll wheel to increase the radius, then you can move the geometry to add some small hills to the ground. I did the same on the other side. Another thing to note is that whenever you move the geometry, you can hold shift to make smaller adjustments. For the grass, I used the GeoScatter add-on. If you don't have access to a plugin like this, I can make a separate tutorial on how to make grass. Please let me know down in the comments if you would like to see one. I always love hearing from you guys regardless. Moving on. I turned down the density and the scale of the grass. I noticed that it was still blocking too much of the car, so I moved the ground down. Okay, now we can add our HDRI. You could get a bunch of free, high quality HDRIs from HDRI Haven. Then I just rotated the HDRI so I could get a part of the sky that I like. Then I turned down the brightness a bunch. Now let's add our headlights. Add a point lamp. Then go to the shader editor and click use nodes. I shift A and add an IES texture. Here's a website where there's way more IES lights than you'll ever need. Once you chose one that resembles a headlight, import it. Rotate the lamp along the Y axis so it looks like headlights. Click Alt D to create an instance of the lamp. So now whenever we adjust the brightness, it adjusts both the lamps. Hit Shift D to duplicate the lamps. Rotate them 180 degrees. This will be our backlights. Make the color red. Move it to its place. Then make another instance. And that's our backlights. Adjust the brightness if needed. That's it for the lighting. Now next, let's make these little reflector things. Shift A to add a plane. Rotate it 
then scale it down, make it more of a rectangle shape. Then extrude it to add a little bit of thickness, then add a material, make the material yellow, and turn down the roughness to make it reflective. Next, let's add an array modifier, so we could extend it throughout the whole road. Make sure it's on the right axis, and then increase the count. I used an array modifier to array it to the other side of the road, but you could just duplicate it, and then offset it. At this point, I decided to do a render test, just to see if I could pick up any mistakes. I noticed one thing that I forgot to parent the lights to the control object. So I selected my lamps, and then selecting the control object last, I hit control P to parent them. Another thing I noticed in the render is that the composition looked a little bit off to me. So I rotated the camera a little bit down to put the car more in the center, and we're done. So this is how I did the grade and the final touches in After Effects. So firstly, I added a little bit of vignette and some Gaussian blur to remove the perfection of 3D. Next, I added some camera shake. You can add it by using a wiggle expression on the position. Next, I used Film Convert to add some grain and a color grade. Using the curves, I made the blacks gray, which looks good in my opinion. I added a little bit of saturation and I scaled the clip over time to make it zoom in. To make sure that the black stays on the top and the bottom, I use an adjustment layer with the crop effect on 11%. That's it. Thank you for watching. And if you have anything to say or any questions, please leave it down in the comments. I love hearing from you guys.